each year there's a there's always a it always gets a little bittersweet at the end there when you when you know it's coming to an end. But uh, the one thing you notice about this group, they're a close group. They care about each other. It was a special day for all the seniors. We've been through a lot together, and to have my family there and be honored for the game, it's really special to me. And I'm really thankful for my time at UND. So that really meant a lot to me. Oh, it's crazy. You know, I I came in here just a little. 205 uh, outside linebacker with a big afro and braces and you know it's pretty it's pretty immature when I got here and you know the, the coaches quickly saw that and uh, made me mature very quickly. You know it's really kind of one of the only football programs that gave me a shot coming out of high school so I remember coach Freund was recruiting me really early on and I just kind of fell in love with the place so you know just building all the relationships that I have it's it's been a dream come true. I mean, it was a mix of emotions, you know, it's kind of the last, it could have been the last time we played in the Alaris Center. You know, I'm just thinking about all the times I spent with those guys, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of hours we put in together, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and yeah, I was just kind of thinking about uh, all the work it took to get there, and how much those guys mean to me, and how special this day is. It's a special day for those people that have really put a lot of time, effort, emotions into the betterment of a program. Those guys have been through a lot. You know, they've won a conference championship here. The, the following year they had, uh, you know, some adversity to be able to go through and then to build this place kind of back up after what happened in 17. Those guys have, uh, you know, have had the total experience, you know, both ends of the, uh, both sides of the spectrum there as far as the goods and the bads, the ups and the downs. I thought they did a really good job this year. We had some low points in the season and some points that were really challenging and tough. And I really believe the senior class stuck together and led our football team. Those guys know they're appreciated and that you know, they've, they've come a long way to look at where, you know, where those guys were at when we first recruited them and, and where they're at now. Just they, uh, you know, they, they become so appreciative of, of everything this place is, uh, has you know, been able to, to give them and, and the opportunity they have here. And it, it really means a lot. You can tell those, you know, those last few weeks with those guys that Everything really gets magnified. You know, that's one of the hard things about college athletics. You seem to have them for such a short time, and it goes by fast. That's the one thing when you give seniors an opportunity to talk to the team. That's the one thing that uh, kind of sticks out in my mind each and every year. The guys tell the young guys, hey, don't blink, because it's going to be gone before you know it. It was a lot of fun, you know, um, just uh, to see those guys on senior day and, and I think, uh, you know, the amount of leadership and, and sweat that they've put into this, uh, this program. Everybody in the, uh, in the organization really wanted to make sure those guys went out with a positive result. Welcome inside the Alaris Center in Grand Forks for Midco Sports Network's coverage of NCAA football. It all comes down to this for the University of North Dakota. The Fighting Hawks need a win today to keep their postseason hopes intact, but it won't come easy against the Thunderbirds from Southern Utah. Well, it was pretty simple that we were in a playoff mentality. We knew we had to go in and win the game. Well, we knew we had to win a, get a win and uh, keep the uh, undefeated record at home, get into the playoffs. and. Just uh, leaving it all out in the field was kind of the, the theme for the day. Going into the game, we knew if we win, we have a potential to get in. Um, and looking at last year, that was the case too, but we, we didn't come away with a win, so we knew it was a huge game. It was really big for us to come out fast, and the coaches were saying, come out fast. Yeah, it's always good to get off to a fast start. I think it gives you momentum, gives you belief, maybe puts your opponent on their heels. So always important to get off to a fast start, you know, and it doesn't happen automatic. You gotta really be focused, you gotta be at the right emotional level, and then somebody's gotta make some plays, and that's how you get off to a fast start. Big to Johannesson, it's Garrett Mogg. Mogg cuts it outside, and he will walk in for the touchdown. The sophomore receiver, a little shake at the line of scrimmage, and he finds pay dirt to put North Dakota on the scoreboard. You know, did get off to a decent start, and then there was a rough spot there in the first half that you, you know, you really want to avoid, but it's going to happen. It happens in sports, and but once again, was really proud of our team that we stuck together. Eventually, got the lead before half, and then played much better in the second half. I think um, earlier in the season it might have been a time where we flinched and we kind of got nervous about things, but uh, we've kind of grown as a team where 
we get in a situation like that and it kind of motivates us to bounce back and we want to show what we can do. You have to do a good job in adverse situations. I think, uh, you know, kind of the, the big momentum changing play of the game was when Evan intercepted the pass, um, you know, right before halftime. I think we're down 14 to 15 at that time and, and, uh, and we turned the ball over it. I just kind of sat in the little window because my guy kind of did a little out and he just threw it right to me. It was probably the easiest interception I've ever had. Evan returned it out to the 30 or the 35. We were able to go down and get points. So I think that was uh, a real key in the uh, in the outcome of the game. Fireworks early and often this afternoon. North Dakota able to take a two point advantage into the break. Well, I think, you know, anytime you have a lead at halftime, you'd like to think if you're, uh, you know, a quality uh, defense, a championship defense, that you can close the door. And eventually, I think the, the consistency that we played with, I just felt like our guys were we're pretty confident that uh, that we could go out and, and really start to gain some separation in the second half. First and ten now. Pressure. Andre Steiger gets home. The senior from Chicago in the backfields. As an O-line, I felt like we played a good game. We uh, definitely have some things we could improve on, but we protected the quarterback, which is important, and we busted out some big runs, which is a big deal. So uh, we were happy to get Skokna in space and see, see what he could do. Skokna on second and short. What a spin move. Luke Skokna to the house. Second touchdown of the day for the freshman. It was awesome. We were, we were so excited for him and I'm glad we could open up some holes for him. And he, he definitely made some things happen. Oh, it was super awesome. I, I sent him a message telling him congratulations and all that stuff. Yeah, it was just good for him to see him get some confidence. Well, I thought there was really good balance in offense. You know, we ran the ball, threw the ball. I thought. Nate played really well at quarterback and made a lot of good decisions. And then defensively, no explosive plays and we're really good on third down. That was really key to the game. You know, we had a really good third down percentage until probably the last drive of the game. But, you know, we really controlled the football and controlled the clock in the fourth quarter. So that really helped our performance. The final score today, 36 to 18. North Dakota goes 6-0 at home. They'll improve to seven and four on the season. And now, Ryan, it all comes down to tomorrow. What the selection committee decides is seven and four. Will that be enough to make them into the field of 24? Well, it's a relief, man. I mean, you just, you, you battle all season long. And, and we knew going into the season that it was gonna be, uh, you know, we we're gonna have to play really, really well to be able to get to seven wins. That's kind of been our goal since midway through the season is to make it out with seven wins. It was a bit of a weird feeling not knowing whether that was the season or not whether we would continue to play or not. Well, we were excited. We knew that that gave us an opportunity, and that's the only thing we were concerned about was winning one game last week to get to seven wins, and we felt like we had built a pretty good resume against, against a lot of good opponents. So we were pleased with what we did to get to seven, and then it was just up to other people. While some football structures out there say, you know what, we're only going to invite four teams. FCS says, let's do 20 more than that. A lot of teams out there hoping to hear their names called. Top left, here we go. North Dakota State will take on the winner of, here we go, Nichols, the Colonels out of the Southland. Their fourth straight win over the weekend. Offense really hitting their stride out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. They are going to host a first round game. Oh, 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 o